verses 37 and 38. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves were breaking into the boat, so that the boat was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion, and they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? You may be seated. Keep your Bibles turned to Mark chapter 4, because that's where we'll be this evening. Mark chapter 4. The story is told of a young father who was doing his family's grocery shopping in a supermarket. And he had his little boy, little toddler, with him. But the toddler was not very happy. He didn't want to be there. He wanted to be home and he wanted to be playing. So he was throwing just an old-fashioned temper tantrum. I mean, it was major. You know, if, if, the, if the dad got too close to the shelf, you know, he would grab a can and just throw it off the shelf. He was so mad. All the time while this was happening, and the little boy was just screaming his lungs off, the father was saying the following words. Easy now, Donald. Just keep calm, Donald. Steady, boy. It's going to be all right. <clears throat> Donald, a grandmother, passed by, and she overheard that young father saying those words. She was so impressed by uh, how this young father was so calm and and collected and, and, and talking very calmly. So she commented, you know, to the to the young man. Then she turned to the little boy and she said, Now tell me, Donald, what seems to be the problem with you? To which the dad replied, Oh no, he's Henry, I'm Donald. You know, sometimes we're searching for a little calm in a very hectic world. The father was trying to find some calm in the midst of his storm. How about you? How about me? You know, in these uncertain times, don't we look for the calm assurance that all will be well? When the world is screaming at us, when the world is is throwing a temper tantrum at us, when we get the bad news, health problems, family issues, Marital unrest. Where do we turn? What do we do? In the midst of our storms, don't we yearn for that stillness of soul, even when the world around us is in turmoil? Look at verse 35 of chapter 4. On that day, Circle that phrase. We're going to come back to it. On that day, when evening had come, evening time comes, he said to them, to his disciples, let us go across to the other side. Uh, Master, don't you know what the other side is? Don't you know what the other side is? That's where the pagans live. That's the Gentile side of the Galilee. You don't want us to go there, do you? And you're having us go at night? That doesn't sound very good. Now that day, that day had been a day of great teaching. As we talked about this morning, he gave the parable of the sower. He gave other parables that day. He was teaching all day long. And now, he's in a boat. Look at 36. And leaving the crowd, they took him. Even though they may not have been too excited about it. Even though they might have had some... uh, some worries. 
They took him with them in the boat, just as he was. And other boats were with him. They got a little convoy of boats going over to the other side. The disciples obeyed. Barring a, a word from Mark, I would say the disciples obeyed immediately. And what happens? Look at verse 37. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves were breaking into the boat so that the boat was already filling. You see, you don't travel on the Galilee at night like this. Storms can come up. You have to be careful. You know, Jesus, you don't know. You're, you're a carpenter. We know, you know. We got a, a bunch of us are fishermen. We know to watch the skies, and we know when storms are coming, and this is not good that we're out here. So maybe we're paying for your mistake. Maybe we're paying for what you have decided to do, Lord. And the boat is filling up. You know, water inside a boat is not good. You know, you want the water outside the boat. You don't want the water inside the boat. And the water is now inside the boat. And the Galilee is pretty deep. Not good. Not good at all. A storm is all around us. You see, even though the disciples did exactly what Jesus told them to do, they ran right into a terrible storm which threatened to sink their little boat. Doesn't look good. You know... As I talk to people, especially when I do counseling, many people, many people have the idea that storms come to their lives only when they disobey God. You know, storms, they only happen when you do something wrong, when you disobey God. But the disciples were not disobeying. In fact, the disciples were definitely obeying. You see, Often storms come because of our obedience. Because we live in a world that's against us. We live in a world that's against our Lord as the forces of evil oppose us trying to accomplish, as we try to accomplish, God's will. Just like it was happening here with these disciples, guess what, friends, it happens even today. We obey. We do what is right. And bad things, bad things still happen. You see, Jesus, Jesus never promised us the absence of storms in our lives. Did you know that? He never promised you that when you became a Christian, you're going to have the golden touch. Everything you touch would become gold. Everything would be all right. You would have no problems, no difficulties. It would be just easy. He never promised us that. In fact, he promised us only that he would be with us through the storms, which he allows only what reason? To test us and strengthen us in our faith in Him. You see, sometimes Jesus does calm the storm. Sometimes He does take care of the problems. And then sometimes He just calms the child. Look at verse 38. But Jesus was in the stern, he's in the back, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him and said to him, Teacher, teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? We're going down. We've already went down once and twice. We're about to go down for the third count. And you're asleep? 
You know, I love the picture here. Jesus isn't worried. Did you catch that? Jesus isn't worried. Jesus is asleep in the boat. He's back there just like it was a nice Sunday afternoon drive. You see, Jesus is Jesus. And they should realize that as long as Jesus is with them, nothing could harm them. Because Jesus is the master. He's the master even of the sea. Look at verse 39. And he awoke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace be still. This is the same Greek words that he used in Mark chapter 1, verse 35, when he told the demons to be silent. He says, shut up, in Arkansas terms. Be quiet. Stop. And guess what happens? Instantly, immediately, the winds cease, and there was a what? A great calm. You see, with Jesus, they shouldn't have been worried. Their boat was not going to go down with Jesus in the boat. You see, this was a test for them. They had been hearing all the lessons. They had seen the great miracles already. Would they trust the Lord? Look here. He said to them, why? Why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? You don't have faith in me? Don't you realize that I'm in control? And nothing can harm you? Nothing can touch you? After Jesus, after Jesus rebuked the wind, he rebuked his disciples for their lack of faith. You see, they had failed the test. They still didn't trust the Lord enough. They were trusting their own abilities, their own knowledge of the sea, their own experiences, and not trusting the master of the sea. Even after all the miracles that Jesus had done in front of them, even after all that Jesus had taught them, they still didn't trust him. And that's why they were afraid. They were afraid because they were trusting in their own abilities. Guess what, friends? When we trust in our own abilities, that's when we are afraid. When we think that we are the master of our own ship, when we think that we have everything in control, and then the world comes crashing down on us, that's when we get afraid. Because, friends, we can't handle it on our own. We need the Lord. Go back to verse. And they were filled. The disciples were filled with great fear and said to one another, Who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? The people around them, the Gentiles, they believed that Baal, there was three things that Baal was in charge of. One of those three things was the sea. When a storm came up, according to them, according to the, to the pagans, it was because Baal was angry. Baal had to be pleased with something. He had to have a sacrifice given to him. You had to do something to, to appease him. What's happening now? Jesus just speaks a word and suddenly they're in the midst of a terrible storm and pow, everything's gone. You talk about going from night to day, they went from it. Everything's calm. They were afraid, not only of the storm that they had just experienced, they were afraid 
they didn't understand this rabbi that they were following. You see, in my opinion, the greatest danger to his disciples at that point was not the wind or the waves. No, the greatest danger was the unbelief in their own hearts. The unbelief, the unwillingness to put their faith, to put their trust in God. One preacher said it like this. Our greatest problems are within us, not around us. That's true of these disciples. Their greatest problem was not the weather conditions. Their greatest problem was their lack of faith inside of them. So no matter what is going on around you, health issues, marital issues, family issues, financial issues, no matter what is going around you, make sure you have faith within. Other words, trust. Trust in His Word. Depend on what the Lord has told you. Trust in Him. Count on His promises. Go back to verse 35. Jesus said, let us go to the other side. He made his will clear. He's going to go to the other side. He's going to spend just a little bit of time. He's going to heal a demon-possessed man. Then he's going to leave. Because the people don't want him there. The town folks don't want him there. And guess what? The very next time he returns, he ends up feeding the 4,000. We go from just one believer, the demon healed man, to go to 4,000 men. Probably women and children are also there. So we may have had, I don't know, 8,000, whatever, people showing faith. In Jesus. Isaiah chapter 55. For as the rain and the snow comes down from heaven and do not return there, but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Verse 11. So shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. Other words, God's word is never ineffective. God's word is always effective. It works. God's word works. God's will as expressed in the Bible, is unstoppable. He will accomplish his plan. Jesus, Jesus had just got through finished teaching them that the word is powerful. Remember the parable of the sower, that it produces tremendous results, 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold. Now they have an opportunity to see it happen right before their very eyes. In the 1900s, thousands and thousands of people migrated from Europe over to this country. One particular man who ended up living in Minnesota told about his journey, how he had got on the boat in Europe And he, unfortunately, their boat faced horrible storms all the way. Every day there was rain and there were storms and the boat was going from one side to the other side, up and down, no stopping. Until finally one day someone looked out to the west and they saw something. It was the Statue of Liberty, and and now they knew it didn't matter about the storms. 
we see our new home. Well, that's what it's like to follow Jesus sometimes. Waves of opposition will pound against us with no change in sight. we got to keep on looking for our Statue of Liberty. We call him Jesus, the Prince of Peace, the, the true champion of our liberty. Know that he will always be there for us. So don't be afraid. Instead, depend on God's Word. Do what God's Word says. Trust in Him. Trust in His promises. Rest in the Lord. And find rest in the storm of life. First of all, trust in His Word. And then second, trust in His presence. Depend on Jesus to be there for you. You see, that's where Jesus was. He was in the boat. He's not back on the shore. He's not up in the mountain praying. He's right there with them. They should not have worried. Hebrews chapter 13. Keep your life free from love of money and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. The Lord will never leave us said in Psalm chapter 46, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. The Titanic was described before it set sail as the unsinkable ship. We know all that happened. It sunk on its maiden voyage. What you may not have heard was the fact that the 16 main engineers who all worked on building the Titanic all attended the very same church. On the Sunday after the sinking of the Titanic, the preacher for that church got up. The topic of his sermon that day, the one he had written already about a week before, was called The Unsinkable Ship. But he wasn't talking about the Titanic. He was talking about this story right here in Mark chapter 4. You see, when you're with Jesus, when you're with Jesus, you're safe. The storms may be great, and your little boat may be very frail, but if Jesus is there, your ship is truly unsinkable. He will not let you drown in the sea of adversity. Instead, he will bring you safely through the storm to the place that he wants you to be. So don't be afraid. Just trust in him. Rest in the Lord and you will find rest in the storm. Trust in his word, number one. Number two, trust in his presence. And finally, trust in his power. Depend on his might, not yours. Count on His authority and His control, not yours. One of the reasons why I love the Gospel of Mark is because the Gospel of Mark makes it very clear that Jesus has all authority. Jesus has all authority, always has and always will. Jesus is Lord. He's in charge. So much so that all creation must answer to Him. He could stop that storm in a split second. Therefore, we don't need to be afraid. If the Lord is with us, you know, with all of our sophistication, with all of our technology, with all of our medical knowledge, let's not miss the wonder right here in this chapter. Jesus is all-powerful, therefore we do not need to be afraid. We don't need to be afraid of this year, 2020, or what may happen next year, 2021, because Jesus is on our side. Just rest in the Lord 
and you'll find rest in the storm. Trust in his word. Number two, trust in his presence. And number three, trust in his power. Stop the worry. The disciples were worried. We're taking on water. We're going down. They were worried. Don't let the worries overwhelm you. Trust in Him. Our job is to trust our Lord. He will see us through whatever problem may happen. And in so doing, we can truly praise Him. We can praise Him in the storm. Tonight, are you a Christian? Have you put on the Lord in, in baptism? There's those simple steps to become a Christian, to believe, repent, confess, and be baptized. Most of us here have done that. But have we let worries overwhelm us? Have we lost focus on what's truly important? Have we lost our captain of our ship? Have we ejected Jesus from being the captain and put ourselves in that spot? Do we need to seek forgiveness? He will forgive. The, the church here is ready to pray with you and for you. How about it tonight? If we could be of any service, we want to help. Would you please come? Will we stand and sing for your encouragement? Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed?